everyone and welcome to the first ever episode of Explore with NTV. So I'm Nadira and now Tuspi is going to be talking about what the topic of today's show is. Well, it's called Current Updates and we're going to be talking about coronavirus, Brexit and the new year. So now that it's the new year, Tuspi, what is one of your new year's resolutions? One of my new year's resolutions are... Um, I want to study hard so I get good grades and drink lots of water so I'm hydrated. That's good. What's your New Year's resolutions, Nadira? I would say a similar thing. One of my New Year's resolutions is probably to also work hard so that I can do well in my degree. I would say another thing is probably after coronavirus and lockdown is over to hopefully in person go to university and join a few more societies and get involved with the community. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. So before we get into coronavirus and Brexit and all those topics, I see you have a friend over there. Yeah, her name's um, Lavender. Oh, OK, that's cool. Where did you find her? A builder bear. Oh, so you built it yourself. How did that how did that work? So you had to choose an animal, mm -hmm. then put cotton in it. And if you press on its paw, then you can hear it talking. And wow. if you hug it, Real tight, you can hear its heartbeat. That's really cool. Can I try? Yeah. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I can hear her heartbeat. Oh, bad. Yeah, it got really bad. Before, um, I used to think that it would be contained within China, but obviously it then spread and became a global pandemic. So um, let's just see what there's going to be for the new year, obviously, as it comes. But so far, we do know that from the previous year, so in 2020, uh, in 2020 2021 is going to have, um, is still going to be impacted by lockdown and coronavirus, obviously. Hopefully, by 2022, we would actually have a cure for COVID and then everyone's lives can go back to normal, right? Yeah, I hope I can go back to school. Yeah, same. So for me, because of the new year, and COVID, I'm still having to do my university classes online. Um, actually, what they said is that it's going to be up until February when they make their next decision. But obviously, even in the new year, you still don't know if that's certain or not. So yeah. potentially, I could do my whole first year of my university all online. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We might not even be in school for changing years, like into year one, year two, year three, year four. We yeah. might not even be at school to mm. experience. So those. I feel like that kind of just highlights how even 2021, like obviously things started to change in 2020, but even in 2021, there's still so much uncertainty with all students. Like even you, you're in primary school right now. And even me, I'm getting affected and I'm in university. So everyone who's in the education is getting affected by COVID. Um, and, you know, we need to deal with that. Uh, do you have any suggestions about how to deal with the new year? What are, you, what are your plans? Well, we might be in lockdown mm. during the new year, so we might want to do some home activities like art or studying if we can, when we go after lockdown, yeah. what, after lockdown, when we go out back to school, mm -hmm. that's when we, c we can get ready to study for our new school. Mm. Well, not in school, but a school that we might go to, we might change year groups. Yeah, and I would say um, one of the most important things that I learned about uh, 2021 uh, because of uh, what happened in 2020 was the importance of having people around you. Um, for me personally, I feel like uh, because of lockdown and potentially the lockdown in 2021, it's really important to also have um your family and your friends around you so that you don't get bored and you also are uh, staying happy and you know with your well-being and stuff isn't that important yeah it's very important to stay healthy and mm. stay well because i think that one of the biggest things about the new year perhaps maybe one of people's biggest new year's resolutions will be to keep exercising you know it's hard to exercise during lockdown so maybe maybe that's going to be one of the new year's resolutions our, our audience is going to have yeah you might have to do, um, 
if you go to a gym mm-hmm. and you have an instructor, you might have to do it online for yeah. you to do exercise. That's really true. A lot of exercising and like dancing, all those things have been online. Obviously, not all activities are able to be online, but a lot of things for young people, I think, are you know being encouraged to be online, so you can still continue. With all the activities that you did previously, before、um, I had my holidays for、mm-hmm. my school, yeah, t- two days before my holidays, I had to do online classes. Really? Okay. Yeah, because my school had to、um, close.、Mm. Wow, that's the same with me actually. Because throughout throughout、um, October till December, I've had all online university classes. I had a brief time where I did go in, but. That was only for about three weeks, so I didn't actually get to experience university. I'm sure、uh, um, school is very different for you. That that experience has changed definitely. Yeah, I did do it in my old school a lot, but、mm. my new school is kind of different from online. Yeah, as well. Do you enjoy wearing face masks and you know having to social distance、uh, around your peers at school? Well, fa- when you put the mask on your face, it's not that comfortable, but it is important to stay safe. Yeah, of course.、Um, a tip for anyone who wears glasses like me is to make sure that the point of the mask is always very tight, so that you don't get foggy glasses when you breathe. <laughs> I've noticed that's a very that's a huge problem that I've had wearing masks during the pandemic.、Um, wow. So that's maybe perhaps something that other people can also consider.、Um, So it is really hard to、um, stay through the rules of coronavirus,、mm-hmm. and during coronavirus, we've had lots of hard times. Yeah. yeah. So perhaps, hopefully, for the new year,、um, those things will be lessened, and we can hopefully get back to our normal lives. Perhaps during the summer of twenty twenty one. Do you have potentially any summer plans for twenty twenty one? Well, I might go out for a picnic,、mm. and maybe I might even. Well, for summer, I'm not sure what I could do、mm. since I haven't been experiencing it, it in my、um, holidays、mm. uh, during coronavirus. So、yeah. I can't remember what I should do on holiday. <laughs> It's、uh, that's true. It's hard to plan things, especially with such an un- uncertain time that we have now. But for Uh, for me, for instance, I really wanted to do like work experiences. I know a lot of other young people, roughly my age, maybe teenagers, also wanted to do work experiences, but then companies have been cancelling them. So that's been really annoying, and it's been quite hard to find actual work experience places or anything、um, productive really to do that hasn't already been cancelled, right?、Um, so hopefully, with twenty twenty one, that won't be an issue, and that the summer、um, plans that everybody has will follow through. Yeah, you can't really learn much because of close.、Mm. I mean, schools have to be closed. Yeah, but that's the thing. There's a difference between education and learning. You know,、um, education you get from schools, universities, colleges, but learning you can do through reading books. You can do it through you know loads of things through researching on the internet, and that's all from home, right? Yeah. So hopefully. Um, in 2021, even if there may be a potential other lockdown, we want to give hope to everybody and say that there's so many things that you could do from home, and that you shouldn't be too worried about 2021. Right? Yes. You shouldn't be too worried because things might get better. Yeah. You- hopefully they will. Yeah. And you might not have to experience the things that you've done that coronavirus had been stopping you to、mm. do. I think another thing is is that they've gotten so used to、um, lockdown that it's actually beneficial now because now that we have an ad- like we've settled down into knowing how online、uh, schools work and how on- working from home works, so potentially twenty twenty one will be much better. Yeah, hopefully it will.、Mm. Or else we might have a hard time remembering things that we could have done. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only problem. <laughs> well, maybe、uh, there are more problems, but I think that's the main problem. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so I hope this will all all coronavirus will end in the new year. I hope so too. Bef- hopefully by twenty twenty two next year, 
things will be so much better and we can just forget about coronavirus and say it's from the past. Yes. How about, um, what else would you want to talk about in terms of the new year? Do you well, have any hopes? I do hope, of course, that we're, we're okay and coronavirus will hopefully get better mm. and we can carry on um, studying at school and not online and remembering things that we haven't done during coronavirus. Yeah, but another important thing to think about when it comes to the new year is that, do, do you remember what's going to happen on the 1st of January? The 1st of January? Yes, New Year's Day, of course. Do you, is it, there something else, do you remember? No. It's uh, going to be Brexit. Oh, so yeah, the, the UK is going to be leaving the EU. Of course, this doesn't affect everybody, um, but it is very important to discuss. Um, oh, your, yes, your teddy bear yeah. is talking. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's very sweet. Yeah. Um, but as I was saying, um, yeah, Brexit is a really important issue um, and lots of businesses are going to be changing. There's lots of deadlines uh, to meet before the 1st of January. So uh, lots of things are going to be changing, but also potentially things from the, uh, from the previous year in 2020 um, will seep in and we'll get used to the lifestyle of potentially online schools and things like that. Right? Yeah. I hope all of the hard things that have been happening end yeah, in the definitely. new year. It's been really difficult. I mean, ha what were some of the difficulties you faced being in lockdown? Well, at home? I haven't been able to go into my school. Mm. Um, Has it been difficult? I mean, you're in, like, have you had it difficult to play with like friends and stuff? Like, obviously, you you must feel lonely, right? Yeah. I can't see my friends very much mm. and we can't have play dates, of course. Have you um, utilised any like technology to try and reach out to them? Like for me, for instance, when, when it was lockdown, a lot of the time I would spend on my phone to phone my friends and so that I don't feel lonely. Mm, no, not really, but I have um, been able to see them on online classes when ah, okay. doing some things. I think that's another thing um, it's obviously not everybody has access to technologies to reach out to their friends so the main thing that should be important is your family right yeah I hope all of the hard times and that's yeah. the only thing I can think about <laughs> um, but I do think that you know everything starts from home and I think it's important to make sure that you're being nice to all of your um, what what is it being nice to everyone to everyone respectful to everyone and you know mainly to your your family and hopefully stay safe okay friends so that's the end of this part of the episode and we're going to take a short break and continue afterwards And welcome back to and explore with NTV. So today we actually also have a guest with us. Um, you can introduce yourself. Uh, hi everyone. My name is Atika. I'm a university student and a games coding tutor. So for this part of the show, we are going to be also reading a book. Um, which book would you like to read, Tusby? I'd like to read this book. Oh, yeah. What's it about? It's called Tiny Jumps In. Okay. So let's have a read of this book, shall we? Yeah. Oh, there's an interesting page. Okay. Let's read the book. Okay. On the shores of a mysterious lake lived a girl called Tiny. She spent her days doing things she loved and every night would tell her sister all about it. Always inquisitive, Tiny would often wander about the lake by her house. There was something intriguing about it. She decided she simply had to explore it. But first she needed to prepare. Determined as ever, she took swimming lessons and practiced every day to become a good swimmer. Finally, the day came where Tiny knew she was ready. She headed out towards the lake, excited in frenzy. 
She practiced her technique one last time. I can do this. And tested the water. Ah, it's perfect. Looking down at the lake, Tiny prepared to jump. But suddenly, she was filled with doubt. The water was deep. Let's do this later. I'll never know till I try. Can I do this? I'm scared. Maybe I'll be ready tomorrow. The water looks really deep. Why was this ever a good idea? Who knew what would lay beneath? Unsure of what Tiny thought of her older sister, um, her sister always was scared, but when it came to new things, she never gave up. Tiny wouldn't give up either. She let go of the branches and all of her fears and took a deep breath and jumped. A giant splash, a thrilling rush. The wait was over and Tiny was swimming in the lake. There were so many fish of different shapes, sizes and colors. Filled with curiosity, Tiny wanted to still go a little deeper. Soon she thought she was swimming with wondrous creatures she had never seen before. And who had never seen her before? Down, 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 she swam past creatures with a kaleidoscope mouth. For one terrifying moment, Tiny thought that she might have been eaten, but the creature gently lifted her away. By now, she was almost out of breath, but clever Tiny found special bubbles to breathe so that she could carry on playing with her new friends. Never had she felt so alive. The lake was beautiful and incredible, but it was time to go home. Tiny couldn't wait to tell her sister all about the underwater adventure. What would she think? She promised herself that she would never forget this day. She had learned that she could do anything if she put her mind to it. Things uh, with the warm sun on her back, Tiny wondered, what is next? And that's the end of the book. Difference. That's a really good book, Tasbi. Yeah. What did you think of it? Well, it's about being brave and trying new things, mm -hmm. and that's the moral of the story right. about trying new things and being brave. Just have a go with it. Mm. See how it is. Yeah, I think a lot of the audience would think that potentially because of uh, the new year, maybe you should also explore and try new things, get out of your comfort zone, and see what you like. I did spot something. Oh. The, all of these are the same, but one of them aren't. The bird is looking down. So it's like a spot the difference in the book, right? Yeah, and I saw another one at the end. Okay, let's see it. Look here. The girl is facing that way oh. into the camera. I think she wants to be <laughs> famous. Wow, that's really cool. Um, what else did you think about this book? Were there any particular characters that you liked? Um, oh, I liked the girl and her sister. Mm -hmm. And what about the creatures? Can you see any of the creatures that you like here? My most favorite creature would probably be this one or that one. Oh, really? I quite like this one. It looks like a jellyfish. Yeah. I think it's important to think about these creatures and not only that, but also what they symbolize. Um, all of these creatures were things that Tiny, the character, was scared of. And I think it's also really important, right, to think about all the different aspects um, of your life or the things that you're going to do in, in the new year that you might be scared of and then try and overcome them, right? Yeah. Like, this one is very unique. Mm -hmm. and, I th and this one... It has two big um, balloon <laughs> kinds, yeah, and then a small balloon kind with like a swirly bit at the yeah. bottom. They're all very different, and I feel like that highlights the fact that there's so many things that you can explore that are really different from one another. And perhaps taking the opportunity to look at them and find out more about them will be really interesting and create a good adventure for you, right? Yeah. So that's one of the books that you wanted to read, right? Tiny jumps in. Is there any other yeah. of these four books that you think are of interest? Mm, I like that one. This one? Monster. 
Monsterology. Monsterology. So monsterology is like the study of monsters. So monsters obviously don't exist, but it's interesting to think about some of the things that people used to think about them. There's lots of interactive things in this book. So there's like a letter here. Let's read the letter. Oh, oh, it's very, it's very tiny. There's yeah. lots of things in this book. Like this letters. Let's see what else there is. Let's put that back first. Of course. Um, there's also a passport. Yeah. It's actually interesting that all passports that we see always have monsters on them. You know. Like they have unicorns or griffins. Yeah. You can see it here. Ooh, a man's passport. That's yeah. Good. There's other parts of this book as well. You can see multiple monsters um, all over these pages. Like for here, for instance, this is a unicorn's hair. Oh. <laughs> um, obviously, that's the unicorn mane. here. Unicorn's mane. But... Yeah. And this is like a lion, but with like. A weird kind of tail. Yeah, and it has like a snake head and a goat head. Yeah, there's loads of monsters that people used to think were real, but obviously now we know that they're not. And there's the skin of this monster. Yeah. Wow, it feels good. Oh, because not only were there monsters um, underwater, but there were also monsters on land and in the air. There were so many flying monsters as well. Let's see what's here. Yeah. It's a picture. Yeah. A plain photo of Neezy. This is a photograph album. Oh, what's this? A skull. Ooh. These are the skulls of these monsters. And there's this. And that's a phoenix. This. this yeah. Do you know? Do you know what a phoenix looks like? Yeah. A bird. And here's a riddle book. Oh, do you the want to see one of the riddles? Look at the answers. Let's They're upside down. Let's look at one of the riddles. How about that? Okay. You might not know the answer, but I'll ask you anyways. Uh, what has no legs in the morning, two legs at noon, and six legs in the afternoon? Mm, I heard a riddle like that. Um, the guest, do you know what the answer may be? What has no legs in the morning, two legs in the afternoon, and six, uh, no, two legs in the noon and six legs in the afternoon. Um, I'm not too sure actually. Let's see what it says. A six legged salamander born with no legs, grown two first and then four others. That's interesting. I wonder what it is. Yeah. I know a riddle kind of like that. Do you remember what it is? So, um, I can't remember what it is. Let me just think. Um, in the morning, you have two legs, I mean, four legs. Mm -hmm. In the noon, you have, I mean, in the evening, you have two legs. And in the afternoon, no, first you, <laughs> okay, I'm just saying. If you don't remember, last, that's fine. And then in the night, um, you have three legs. What is it? I have mm. no idea. Should I tell you the answer? Go on. So first, when you're a baby, you crawl, you crawl with your hands and your legs. Mm -hmm. So that's four. Yeah. And then later, when you're an adult, you just have your two legs. Mm -hmm. And then when you're older, you have a stick and two legs. And oh, that's three. I see. So that's an interesting riddle. It's it's, it's nice yeah. to see that like. These riddles can obviously also be interchanged with, you know, what we what we experience growing up and things like that. With your example of the age um, and our legs, but then also it can be applied to monsters and phoenixes and you know all these types of creatures. Obviously, they have multiple legs. So let's see what's next. Ooh, something else. There's a here. centaur here. Yeah, you a know centaur. what a centaur is? Yeah, it's um a um, half man, half goat. A horse. Horse, right. Yeah, and look, it has a bow and arrow and it's killing the monster that looks a lot like Medusa. Yeah. Do you know that from uh, mythology? No, but I've heard the name. Mm. What? Oh my goodness, that looks like a vampire. Yeah, it's, it's mm. quite scary actually. 
Yeah, and that's and that looks like a werewolf. <laughs> I don't know what that looks like, but it looks like a man. Let's see. R- a record book. Oh. Okay, so here's a line kind of monster. Oh, I think this is a record of um, a description of all these monsters. Wow. That's interesting. There's quite a few. What's this? I don't know. Well, it was quite hard to open that one. Maybe we should leave it. Okay. There's a lot of pages. Wow, Ooh. what is this? This, oh, be careful. Here okay. is a, a door. Is a door. And look, and it says here, this is a sample of some yeti fur. Do you know what a yeti is? Yes. What it is it? from caves. <laughs> yeah, this is this giant is a... furry man. What's this? This is a scrap of spell casting. Page wow. Man. Wow. And this what's, is a... Uh, what's this? Amber from the Phoenix. Um, wow. And this, this is, is a piece of mermaid skin. Mermaid skin? I think it's from the tail. Yeah. Of the mermaid. Did you like this book, Atika? Uh, yeah, I found it really interesting. I think monsters are quite fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to go over any other book? Mm, well, since you br- brought this, I want to, maybe you could talk more about Egypt and the pharaohs. I feel like we should go through um, the next book then. Actually, that yeah. This That's is... close to Egypt. I mean, it's about dinosaurs. It's quite a different topic. Let's just look um, about. Uh, look at the pictures. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we don't be have... careful. Oops. Wow. So do you know, have you ever studied um, about dinosaurs at school? Mm, no, I haven't yet. I'm sure you must have heard... I'm sure you must have heard about um, some of the dinosaurs here, like T-Rexes. Yeah. Plosauruses. Yeah. Or What's Triceratops. Your fav- yeah. What's your favourite dinosaur? I would probably say... Um, the Triceratops. I think it looks really cool with the, all of its horns, mm. and it's very um, uh, protective. You know, it has a lot of defensive uh, aspects about. about I the like dice. pterodactyls. Really? How come? Well, it's not. Well, it's. I don't know. I don't know what I like about them. It's just I love them. I think they a lot fly. Yeah, I think a lot of people really like dinosaurs because they're such interesting creatures. You know, they yeah they, they were hunt thousands of years ago. Yeah, yeah, so it's quite fascinating to think about all the creatures that lived before humans did. I know what dinosaurs means. It means like um nasty lizard or horrible lizard. Oh wow. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, that's. It's a really weird I, explanation. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I just think dinosaurs, monsters, you know, some people might even say that dinosaurs are a, like a type of monster, you know, they're very scary, they're... Yeah, like... like obviously you said they're the like f- the real life um, monsters, you know, all, all of those monsters were fake, but dinosaurs really did exist. Yeah, they really did. Um, you can find that out from ho- fossils. Mm. And things that scientists found, or yeah. people who dig up and find some things, mm-hmm. like explorers. We're explorers. Yeah. So because of the fact that loads of people decided to explore the ground and see all of these fossils, we now know that mon- uh, that di- dinosaurs did exist. Yeah. Woof. I'm kind of. Oh. Mm-hmm. Really so interesting eggs at the back of the book. Yeah, that dinosaur is. eggs. Yeah. So for now, we're just going to be taking another quick break, and we'll see you yeah. next time. Hi everyone and welcome back. So this segment of the show is going to be focusing on our guest that we previously met. So hi Atika. Hi everyone again. How are you? I'm doing really fine, thanks. 
Okay, so we, me and Tuspy would like to interview you and get to know you a bit better. Is that all right? Yeah, sure thing. So, Atika, um, what advice would you give to people who want to be productive during lockdown? Um, I think my main thing is try to start your day well. Yeah. I think when you wake up really late and don't have a proper breakfast, that can make things really difficult. Mm. So if you want to have productive days, just start your day really well. And it will set the tone for the rest of your day. That's, um, that's pretty good advice. Just take things one step at a time. Mm -hmm. Taking things one step at a time. So I think sometimes people feel too much pressure to plan out their whole week. Uh, but that can be really difficult sometimes. And you never know what's going to come up. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just taking things a day at a time. Okay. Do you have any questions, Lusby? Uh What are your hobbies? Uh, well, my personal hobbies are sort of related to what I study at university. Mm -hmm. I really like computer programming, and it's something I've been focusing a lot more uh, because of lockdown. I've had more time for it. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's one of my main hobbies right now. That's so interesting. Would you say that your hobbies and your education and things like that have been affected from lockdown? And how have you handled the transition from online to uh, no, so from in person to online activities? Um, well, I found it a little bit difficult at first, especially the educational aspect, um, mostly because it's not something I've really done before, having to learn remotely. Um, but one thing that really helped me was uh, keeping in touch with my friends. Yeah. So as long as you have people you're staying in contact with to discuss things with, um, I think that really helps. Mm -hmm. um, because staying at home, sometimes you can lose some of the valuable interaction that you'd have when you're outside doing your hobbies or uh, studying with other people. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I was told that you are a programming and games tutor. How have you helped other kids also stay productive during lockdown? Uh, so, I've been a games coding tutor for a long while mm -hmm. um, at a center where they teach young children how to make their own video games. So, we've had to transition from in person to online mm -hmm. um, work as well. Yeah. Um, the way I've kept them really engaged is trying to encourage them to learn independently. So instead of seeing it as a negative thing that you don't have a tutor by your side all the time to help you, mm. to see it as a positive, it's your chance to be creative and um, work without as many interruptions um, yeah. and really just take the reins on your own learning. I guess that's kind of similar to like online schools and obviously she would be teaching kids similar to your age yeah. about programming and games. Yeah, that is. Um, what do you like about your work? Uh, what I really like about my work is that I get to help people all the time um, and it's also really satisfying teaching someone something new for the first time. Um, most of the kids who I work with have never done any programming before um, and it's really satisfying to see how much they grow over the few weeks that I work with them. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Would you say, what would you say is one of your uh, goals or New Year's resolutions for the future? Obviously, hopefully lockdown um, in 2021 will end and potentially your work will be in person again. Is there any goal that you have? Um, well, I try not to set too many tight goals because I think it can be quite restrictive. Mm. Uh, but I do like to think of things a month at a, at a time. Uh, so for next month, for example, I'm, I've got an internship that I'm currently working on. So I want to focus on that. Um, but for the whole year as a whole, um, I really want to make sure that my studies are on top of uh, things. So just getting as good a grade as I can, really. Um, and just trying to be as productive as possible because I think it's easy to let time go in ways that you don't even realize. So I think, yeah, the main thing is really just trying to stay a bit more intentional about how I use my time. Mm -hmm. What um, have you been, what activities have you been doing during lockdown? Uh, well, in all honesty, I've been mostly hanging out with my friends remotely, mm. watching movies together. Um, online has been more of a thing these days mm. um so yeah i think the main thing is really just trying to spend time with friends who i otherwise wouldn't get to speak to yeah um and also doing a lot of learning on my own as well i really like learning about different topics um so i think just doing reading in my own time picking up books um watching documentaries um yeah i think things like that can really keep you engaged when you're at home so do you enjoy um, learning from home? Like even though your education is obviously online, you have the opportunity to learn from home. And I think that's, what, what do you think about that? Is that something that you enjoy? Um, well, I think it's not preferred, although I think it is a unique opportunity. So I, I like the fact that 
I have more time because I don't have to travel to places yeah. to do things that I really care about. Mm. Um, so I'm trying to make the most of a unique situation. Um, yeah. I think most people should try to use their extra time to really foster things that they haven't had time for in the past. Um, so overall, I think I've been making the most of it, although I would look forward to going back to normal. Yeah, definitely. So would you like to start the quiz now? Yes. Yeah. So Atika, we have a few quiz, uh, quiz questions for you um, about the topic that we've been discussing. So that includes New Year's, Brexit and coronavirus. So um, me and Tusby will be asking you questions um, one by one and then we'd like to hear your answer. Okay, so, so the first question is, a high temperature and a contagious cough have been official coronavirus symptoms in the UK since the start of the pandemic. But which of these did the government add to the list of early symptoms that people should look for? One, a sore throat. Two, a rash on your skin. Three, losing your sense of smell or taste. Uh, so I'll, sh I'll just pick one of the answers, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think losing your sense of smell. Uh, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, that's right. Um, okay. So that's that's right. So um, the next question is going to be: uh, People are advised to social distance by staying two meters apart. But what kitchen appliance did the government use to help people understand that you need to stand two meters apart? So option A is a cooker, option B is a fridge, and option C is a microwave. Uh, well, a cooker and a microwave definitely aren't two meters long, so I think a fridge. Yeah, that's right. That's good. Okay, so the next question is, one, what day did the UK formally leave the EU? One. 31st of October 2019 2 31st of January 2020 3 20, 22nd of May 2019 Um, I'm not very good with the dates but I do know it was this year so it was the option that had 2020 uh, so Yes, that, that's correct Yeah, so that was the 31st of January 2020 was when we officially or left the EU but obviously um, that did take a lot of time for us and now on the 1st of uh, January 2021 is the official date that um, we will be leaving the EU. So the next question is, uh, what percentage of people voted to leave the EU? Um, but option number A is 57%, B, 54%, uh, or C, 52%. I'll go for the middle one, 54%. Oh, um, it's not actually 54%, it's 52%, so it's the third option. Um, it's actually quite interesting because all of these uh, options were within the 50s range, so actually um, the split was, um, wasn't was necessarily drastic, it was quite even, I guess. Yeah. It's all in the 50s, 52%. That would have been hard. Yeah, it was a very answer. difficult decision. Um, okay, so what is the animal which will will be represented in the Chinese New Year in 2021? Um, are there options for this one? Oh, yeah. Um, one, the ox. Two, the rat. Three, the dragon. Um, I feel like the year of the rat has passed. So maybe the ox? Yes, that's correct. Now, the next question and the final question is, on New Year's Day 1993, which former country effectively split into two? One, the Czechoslovakia, two, Cyprus, or three, Republic of Congo? Um, I'm not too good with history, but maybe Czechoslovakia, because I think it's two countries now. Yeah, that's right. So, actually, I think you got five out of six of the questions correct yeah yeah you did really well um so that's really good you know quite a bit about uh eu uh and lockdown and also just general facts about the new year so i also hope that the audience learned a bit a bit about those topics as well through the yes. quiz virus and brexit let's talk about those topics so atika do you have any concerns about brexit or coronavirus um well with regards to brexit I've heard that a lot of businesses are going to have to go undergo quite a lot of drastic changes to keep up with new rules. 
Um, so it is a little bit concerning thinking about the fact that so many businesses, which, you know, our country and our economy rely on those things, mm. that they're going to be so heavily affected. But overall, I feel that it's not. Okay, so now that the quiz is over, we let's hear Atika's opinions about Brexit, coronavirus and the new year. So Atika, how have you felt uh, about Brexit and what are your opinions on it? Uh, well, overall, I think it's quite a confusing time for a lot of people, especially people who own businesses. Uh, so it is a bit concerning to think that uh, the majority of the businesses in our country are going to be facing some sort of change. Yeah. Because obviously our country's economy relies on these businesses. Mm. Um, but I try not to overthink it. I think people will do a good job at coping with whatever changes come our way. Yeah. Hopefully um, Brexit won't uh, impact uh, businesses too harshly and that things can still run smoothly, right? Yeah, I hope so too. Yeah. Uh, do you have any of your your thoughts about the new year? Um, potentially, lockdown might be over. The after effects of Brexit. Uh, well, I think in terms of personal life, I think a lot of people are looking forward to New Year, uh, but it's going to be a bit different this year because of Tier Four in London, at least. Um, in terms of Brexit, I think a lot of people kind of have a lot of other things to worry about as well. So uh, it might be a bit of a stressful time. Uh, but I do hope people try to find a time to enjoy uh, New Year's Eve and have some celebrations with their friends and family. Yeah. And that's probably the same uh, the way people felt about Christmas, right, Tuspi? Yeah. Obviously, it was so hard um, dealing with lockdown and coronavirus during Christmas time, but hopefully everybody still enjoyed their Christmases, even if it wasn't with all of their family members. Yeah. Um, I want to say something about Brexit. I, so the meaning of Brexit is break exit and about Christmas, mm -hmm. um, you can go out and see the lights and, yeah. um, I saw a Santa Claus on the street mm -hmm. next to a big tree. So I oh, that's took nice. some photos and there were angels. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Atika? How did you spend your Christmas? Uh, well, I managed to make a roast dinner for my family, so I think it was mostly quite successful. Although I didn't manage to go outside and see anything like the lights that Tusby saw. So that's oh. unfortunate, but perhaps next year. Yeah. So. I mean, it's really important to still stick with your families um, and maintain the social distancing rules, and but still also try and have a bit of fun. Obviously, this year has been ex extremely stressful uh, and there's more stresses to come our way. Hopefully we can manage that with Brexit and potentially new lockdown rules. Lockdown is really hard, but Christmas was at least fun. So bye friends. It's the end of the episode. Watch us next Sunday and we're going to be talking about cartoons. <laughs> bye. Bye everyone.